Hello. Either way, uh, have you ever wondered about making your own maps for D D or for some other tabletop, Pathfinder, for example? All of those nowadays are using virtual tabletops because hashtag COVID, and so none of us can actually be in a table with each other properly. So I'm gonna let you know how to make your own maps. <laughs> how does it get done? Well, first off, you're gonna want to get something called Dungeon Draft. Now I use it with a program called Foundry, but Dungeon Draft's fantastic export feature that we're gonna be taking advantage of today works with other programs. Roll20 being one of them, D20 Plus. There's a couple, it'll be on screen. That is it, the export feature we're gonna be using. Fantastic, Universal VTT it's called, and it allows you to throw out your map with its walls and its lighting and when it comes into the virtual tabletop, all that dynamic lighting is simulated straight out of the bat. It's hard-coded and baked into the map file. So your walls will block light. If you give your players a torch on the virtual tabletop, the walls you drew in Dungeon Draft will block light. You don't have to take any extra steps. So what's the catch? Well, Dungeon Draft is about 20 pound, which isn't the end of the world, considering what you're getting is brilliant. It's one of the cleanest UIs I've ever seen and I had so much fun using it that it's actually just become kind of a relaxing thing for me. What are we going to end up needing for this all to work? How do I get Dungeon Draft into Foundry? Well, let's have a look. You can pray, we'll need you later. All right, first of all, to make your Foundry work how we want it to, we're gonna to need to get our spoon and shovel in some Dungeon Draft over here. So let's bring that over. That's going to be Dungeon Draft, and this is going to be our magical export that's going to get this into there. This we're going to talk about later. We've got a break from the cold and the wind. Quick, before it starts again. And we're home. Make the water brown. Is how there's water and tea in that cup and not milk. There's no milk yet, because you put in milk last. Fucking degenerates. A dirty brown. Don't, 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 don't smell, don't smell. Come on, come on. So, I was talking earlier about Dungeon Draft. This is it. You can click on new, you can make a giant map. Let's start with the map wizard. You can add in your own asset packs so you can get more toys to play with. Let's make ourselves a cave. Let's make sure it's a dense and complex cave. Generate. Zoom out, have a look at that. Hmm. I want something more. Let's try again. Let's try again. Maybe make it less dense. Ooh, that's better. Lots of winding caverns. Caverns! Perfect, that'll do. Now what we're gonna do is gonna go into objects and scatter tool. We're gonna grab some bones, let's say. Press enter. We'll grab these bones. I'm just gonna start strewing them around this middle pile here. There we go. Make sure there's like a little nest there. This is some like King Kong shit. And next we're gonna go over to, uh, where is lighting? Here we go. Let's get ourselves a campfire or two there. And maybe, maybe something super, super, right over here. That's, that's hella bright, holy shit. That'll do. And now finally we're going to make some walls and put a door down so we can really show off what Foundry's doing. Let's even make a small room in here. Maybe there's a dungeon that comes down and uh, intersects with this whole range. That didn't quite work. I'm gonna use this in a little bit. Uh, let's make a wall around it. Bunk. Now we're going to chuck a door on it. Let's put one door there, one door here. And now let's add a light source inside that room as well. Let's say there's a an orange, no, that's way too similar, blue. And we'll make it less intense. <laughs> there we go. Boom. Wonderful. There's a lot of other toys on here and you can have a really fun time making it. But what we're going to do now is go to export. Now we're looking here. Export mode is on Universal VTT. You can do PNG and JPEG as well and get your normal flat picture coming out. But if you want these walls, doors, and lightings and 
all that dynamic features that are normally a pain in the ass to set up later, baked in, universal VTT. That's our go-to. We can turn off the grid here because we're going to have it on on Foundry just to make sure that players aren't getting confused which grid to follow. We can, we're going to keep the lights on. Uh, but there's a lot of other things like Sapia filter and uh, printer friendly mode. Fucking Jesus. We've got best quality here for the pixel count. Pixel count is very important, especially if you're uploading it onto something. Foundry it can be a little bit more forgiving because it's on your own computer. Uh, I believe it's the same with the other one. <sighs> I used it for a bit as a classic and a Unity. Fantasy Grants. Fantasy Grants Unity. They also have like a local file structure. But if you're uploading to say Roll20, you'll want to make sure you're on the 70 pixels per square option. And then it'll tell you your output size as well, just down there. Um, make sure that that number is right for what you're going to be using. I make sure all of this stuff is in the file name of what I'm going to be giving you. So you shouldn't be able to fuck it off. It'll say grid 256 res 760 by 760. If you can't work that much out, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but we're going to save this as cave. It's going to pan across all the way as it renders each grid. Uh, that was reasonably fast. So now what we're going to do is going to go over to Foundry. On here, you're going to put in your super secret access code. You're going to go to add on modules. That was just the uh, downloads folder opening up and telling us that we have our cave. It's a dot DD2 BTT. As far as I could understand, that is Dungeon Draft 2 Virtual Tabletop. I love it. <laughs> um, scrolling on down though, you're going to want to install a module. If you type in universe, you should get it there because it's Universal Battle Map Importer. You're going to want to make sure that is installed. That is going to let us import this .dd2vtt file. It's going to let us import the Universal VTT export we just did. So if we go to Lost Minds of Pendelver, we're going to ignore the fact that there are so many people here and I have another super secret password. They're different. They're not much better. And we are going to ignore all of that crap. We're going to go over to Universal Battle Map Import. We're going to type in super secret cave and we are going to choose file and it's going to be bonk and we're going to click import and it's done. It's right there. It's up here as well. We are going to have a look at it now. This grid is not the one that we saw in dungeon draft because it is the one. See dungeon drafts has got all these little holes in it. This is our foundry grid. Our grid is actually hidden. And we have all of our lighting here and walls and you can see they're, you know, doing that. But if it was a JPEG or a PNG, that's hard baked. What can I do on here? I can open it up. The lighting comes through. Now there's an obvious side benefit that the lighting sources are actual lighting sources. I can pull that away and the image that the light cast onto the map would still be there, but it's a there's only so much you can do, you know? This is the actual blue light, but it's, uh, it's, it's still a light source. So there's a little bit of give and take there, but it's no different from say people, you know, breaking that wall and you having to like scribble it out. Wonderful. You broke down the wall. You turned off the light. So that is the whole process. Now it's just a matter of making your maps. Final thing I want to talk to you about is if you use something called D&D Beyond. This is incredible. You can go to your module, let's say Lost Minds of Fendelver, and you will be able to, when I have a foundry window open, this changes into an import and you can pull in battle maps and you can pull in characters, monsters, spells. If you have access to it in d Beyond, he's got his own database that lets him pull in from d Beyond to Foundry. So you end up with these red folders and then you say part three, the spider's web, and you can see a Cragmaw Castle map. Wrong fucking. And there we go. That's something that they put out and it's got its walls and it has lighting and stuff. It's very well done. And this is worth 
more looking at, but if you guys want, let me know. Comment below. As you can see, it's not exactly difficult, but it is, it is extra steps and there is a price tag to it. I'm thinking I'm going to be making some videos where it's just me building the map in a kind of time lapse or speed through uh, to match the length of a song. And so you essentially have a, a video to watch while you listen to a song. Uh, and in the description I'll have that map as a exported in a couple of different formats. I've already got one exported already that's in the comment sections on one of the earlier Foundry videos. Uh, someone was interested in the map. Their names at the start and that same got all of the links will all be below. You'll be able to pick up any of the maps I make from the same folders. Just keep your eyes on them. Uh, but if that's something you guys are interested in or you really want really want a specific kind of map, let me know, because I'll focus those first. I just need to have a look at the program, get reacquainted, and make some maps again. It's actually been quite fun. It's very pleasing to use. But now you know the full feature set of my current how to run a foundry virtual tabletop game. I use dungeon drafts to make custom maps, and if I need to for D&D Beyond, I import with VTPA. Oh, well, I hope you enjoyed. That was an extravaganza, but I'm ready for the next one. Just let me know what you want. Which map? What content? I was thinking about mixing Arma 3, if any of you guys have seen the rest of the shit on my channel. There's a lot of this game where it's like a big simulator, battlefield-y kind of thing. It's pretty fun, and I've been exploring some ways to make it become more like Arma. Or sorry, more like D&D. I'm not sure, I'm still fucking around with it, but if you're interested in that, let me know. I'm streaming every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Feel free to come along. Got a better mic quality and a better camera than I do right now. But none of those wanting to cooperate with me with this, so... Here we are! <laughs> Upside down! Woo! Come back soon! Like and subscribe! <laughs>